Okay, this is the pocket piece which I've altered because uh, uh, there are a few versions of what the pocket flap actually looks like. So that bit is a bit confusing. So what I've decided to do is give it a gentle curve on the edge and then give it another curve for the bottom. So I've changed that. And on the pattern, it only allows four, uh, four buttons. But on Jack's costume, there are actually five. One, two, three, four, five. So I've marked those off ready. And this is the cuff pattern, which will be altered. I'm going to extend it out at least another two to three centimetres that way. And then incorporate a curve into it. So that would be that pattern change. And on the sleeve there are five buttons as well, not four, like it's, it says in the pattern, they are spaced out. So the centre mark on the top of the sleeve will have a button, and then evenly space another two on this side, and another two on the other side. And these are the patterns for the upper and the lower sleeve. As I said before, they are just not long enough by at least five inches. I want my uh, jacket cuff to go right down to the wrist. So I've split the pattern in two on both sections and I've added an infill which takes it wider by another five inches and that's for both of them and you'll do them exactly in the same place. Although the sleeve pattern itself doesn't show anywhere where you can actually um, make the sleeves longer or shorter. I've chosen the middle section. I think that should cover it. Also, this curve, which goes on the top of the sleeve, I think is too curved. So when I come to cut it out, I'm going to actually bypass that and reduce the curve a bit. So hopefully that will make it look better. Okay, now we're coming to the pattern front. With this particular pattern, they don't give you a lining, and I think that Jack's coat should be lined. So what I've done is I've pinned the front section to a few pieces of newspaper that have been joined up together, because I haven't got a piece of tissue big enough, and I should be cutting out the original pattern. Okay, because I'm going to be adding a little bit more room on the back seam, it will mean that I'm going to extend the pattern by about two centimetres, which also means that the back facing will need to be altered. Where you've got the fold line there, place that on the fold, and then you'll be slightly moving it out from the material's edge by the same amount that you've added to the back piece. Otherwise this, this section is not going to fit. Right, I've cut out a copy of the front piece and I've pinned the front facing to the front edge of my piece. What I'm going to do now is get a marker and I'm going to mark on my copy where the front facing goes all the way down. Right, having drawn our line all the way down, this side is going to be our lining. So what you need to do is before you cut up to the line, you must allow a seam allowance. So come this way at least five eighths of an inch to allow for your seam allowance and cut on this side of the line all the way down. Right, I've now cut that out, allowing for a seam allowance, and this is now going to be your front lining, so do not lose it. I've now cut out a back pattern for the lining, and I shall do like I did in front front section. Cut out an exact copy. This is the revised one with the extra amount down the centre back so I've increased it slightly. Then you'll get your back facing 
which you would have increased it as well by the same amount on the fold. Place it on the top where it's going to be, would have been sewn in, and make a mark. Take that away, and what you're going to be doing is allowing for a seam line. So you're going to be cutting the seam line on this side of the blue mark. Okay, that's been cut now, the seam, new seam line, and this will be your back lining. This is my new Godet template. I've now increased it by almost double. And don't forget, you're going to need a lining for these pieces as well. I've only cut two because that was, that's all we need at the back of the coat. So you need two pieces of lining exactly the same size. Okay, for my jacket, I'm going to put in a couple of pockets doesn't show you on the pattern how to do them so I'm going to run you through a very basic pocket and if you've never done pockets before I'm sure you'll be able to follow these instructions because it's very simple okay we've cut out our pocket flap but instead of doing it on the curve I've done it on the straight the next item you need to cut out is four pieces of fabric that you're going to use for your coat wider than the pocket. I've neatened mine off with overlocking but you could use a satin stitch or whichever stitch you have on your sewing machine or even pinking shears. And the pocket itself is about six centimeters deep. Then you'll need your lining. This needs to be as wide as the piece of fabric I've just cut, cut out. I've made my pocket about 30 centimetres deep. It probably won't end up this deep when I put it on. But I'd rather have it too big to begin with than not big enough. And then you've got to do the pocket all over again. Right, so you'll need four of these and four pieces of lining. And this is a practice piece I've done earlier on. It's a sm much smaller pocket, but just to give you an idea of what yours will look like and there's the opening for your pocket then when you finish your flap that will be sewn on along the top and it will hide all that right the first thing you need to do is to sew on your strip of fabric to the top of your lining and you'll do that twice for each pocket Next you need to mark the position of your pockets. Um, lay your pocket uh, where you think is, is comfortable for the person who's going to wear it. Mine just happened to be more or less where they marked it on the pattern. But I don't want mine as far forward as they put, put there, so I've moved it back a bit. So mark where the pocket is going to be. And then mark off a line of tailor's chalk between the two marks on both pieces. Then with your pocket pieces upside down you're going to lay them up against where you, your tailor's chalk mark was central so that you've got the same amount poking out of both sides. And then where the line ends going to position a pin between those two pieces so you know where your stop line is. Okay you're going to sew between your two marks as closely as you can to the previous sewing on your flaps. Don't go backwards and forwards with your sewing machine at the beginning or the end. Leave a tail because then you're going to pull the thread from underneath and tie it off with some knots. Then turn the whole jacket front upside down so you can see the reverse of the jacket and you can also see better where your line of stitching has come through. 
where the dotted line he is here, we're going to cut a slit and before he gets to the end, we're going to then cut off diagonally. Be very, very careful not to cut the stitches. Next, you will turn the flaps inside out. So this is the outside of the, of the, the jacket and the flaps now have been turned the other way. I just put this up from underneath. You can see your pockets. This is the lower one. And this is the one that's on top. I'll just pull the jacket back down again so you can see. That's what your jacket will look like. What you've got to do now is give it a good press. Make sure that your seams meet and that it's, it's neat. Okay, now we've turned it right way out and we've um, ironed the flap. We now need to sort out the inside of the pocket. So, turn over the edge of the coat until you can just see where the pocket has been sewn in. You'll notice that there's a little triangular flap there. Make sure that that is sticking out. Make sure the top flap is flat and this bottom flap will have to turn over slightly like that. Pin that down because you're going to sew from there as close as you can to the material. We're now going through the material and then if I just move the jacket out of the way going to continue your sewing line down into your lining. Now what I've decided to do is give the pocket a curve inside rather than an angle because as we know when things get trapped down in uh, into corners that's where all the wear starts and then you're going to start losing your, your money. So I'm going to create a curve along and go all the way up the side and then you will do exactly what you did on the other side. Move your jacket out of the way, make sure that you can see that little triangle and sew it as close to the fabric as you can without actually going through it. And then what I shall do is run another sewing line as a reinforcing line going all the way around just to make sure that nothing is going to fall out of those pockets. I've now sewn the pocket flaps together, right side to right side, and check to make sure that they extend beyond the pocket opening itself. The whole thing then is going to be turned inside out, so don't forget to clip your curves.